Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television coming to you live from Lagos. And we have some pictures that were sent in to us and let's share them with you, shall we? Let's begin with this image of a bad road on the federal highway in Calabar, the Cross River State Capital. Our eyewitness reporter is unhappy about the trouble motorists have to go through and is calling on the government for its immediate intervention. Move on to this next image from Asaba Onisha Road, close to the Niger Bridge, showing a traffic gridlock. Our eyewitness reporter says this happens all the time as a result of the poor state of the road there and is asking the authorities to fix it. Our final picture is from the Lagos Abeokuta Expressway, showing a flooded road. Our eyewitness reporter says this is as a result of bad drainage and is calling on the government for assistance. Thanks a lot for your pictures and do keep them coming. To take another look at the D8 summit, which is due to begin tomorrow in Istanbul, I'm now being joined on the news at 10 by a senior lecturer in the political science department of the University of Lagos, Dr. Godwin Okeke. Thank you so much for joining us on the news at 10. Thanks for inviting me. And Nigeria is said to have joined this particular group for economic reasons, um, etc. Do you think that we're leveraging on all that this particular group has to offer? Well, maybe it's too early in the day to start making judgments. Because this is an organization that you know, started as a, a seminar that was given by the former Prime Minister of Turkey sometime in 1996. And they were supposed to be meeting every two years. The last time they met was uh, 2013, 2016. They are meeting again. Uh, they have met in Nigeria and Abuja on uh, July 7, 2010. So, uh, generally, what I think is it still falls within the uh, foreign policy principles of, of, of Nigeria, which is enshrined in the uh, 1999 constitution as amended, particularly chapter two, if you, you know, which defines the principles of Nigeria's foreign policy. One, multilateralism is good, uh, and it, it falls within the purview of Nigerian, Nigerian foreign, uh, foreign policy calculations. But if you consider that in line with the present uh, policy of the government that tries to withdraw from our 90 international organizations, and what Nigeria stands to gain. Well, there are some bright uh, aspects of the uh, membership of the organization, but since it's still in the process of you know, maturing to uh, a situation where we can say these are the tangible benefits we are getting from membership of that organization. You know, if we consider it side by side with the other organizations we want to withdraw from, which we have not you know, known because the committee that was set up by the Federal Executive Council has not come out to say these are the, the you know, international organizations we are withdrawing from. So, it's a little bit confusing when you say you want to withdraw and yet you are you know, making another inroad into another you know, international organization. But is it too early to assess our membership, uh, really? If you look at the other countries that, that are a part of that group, Iran, Malaysia, Pakistan, Turkey, Indonesia, these are all co countries that sort of joined at around the same time as we did. And we've seen the sort of progress they've made in terms of their economy. So is it really too early for us to say what are we getting out of it? I don't think Nigeria is on the same pedestal when you start talking about you know, the growth of the economy you know, with all these other members of the uh, D8 uh, Organization for Economic uh, Cooperation. There are still a lot of uh, you know, uh, issues. If you look at both, as, aside from the economy, the, you know, the political stability of these other countries, they are quite more stable than the kind of, because every foreign policy has to be a reflection of the country's domestic politics. And the national interest of that country has to be you know, the, the, the uh, utmost in the pursuit of any foreign policy objective. So when you look at that and you look at these countries who are members of the D8 Organization for Economic Cooperation, uh, they are not, you know, cannot be equated with Nigeria on the same, you know, in the terms of the criteria you're using to judge, uh, you know, the membership. Okay, looking at the other international organizations that we are members of, over 100 of them, and obviously we're trying to pull out of some of them, um, some people have asked if we are actually getting the sort of respect that we that we're looking for on the international scene, or are we, is it the clout on the local scene that we're looking, looking out for on the local continent? Well, you see, um, there's a, a maxim in international law that says, Pacta sunt sabanda, that uh, you must uh, you know, honor an agreement entered into. If you look at that and then uh, look at the situation where Nigeria says that Africa is the centerpiece of a foreign policy, and if you look at the stand of the founding fathers of the you know, uh, Nigerian state, they agree that you know, Nigeria has a historic mission and, uh, you know, in the African continent. When you look at that and you look at the situation where Nigeria is presently, I think the focus of the Nigerian government should be on macroeconomic convergence and integration of the African continent, which is very, very you know, important. That official stand has not been you know, uh, you know, vacated. 
And there was a committee that was set up during the Jonathan administration, the annual committee that you know has submitted they submitted their report. I don't know what the uh, that report, the content of the report is, but we believe that you know some of these reviews you know, of Nigeria's uh, you know foreign policy objectives should have been taken into consideration, both in terms of right. whether we want to withdraw or want to continue our membership of any other you know uh, international organization. All right, senior lecturer in yeah. political science at the University of Lagos, Dr. Godwin Okeke. Thanks for coming on. The Thanks for inviting tonight. me. Yeah. Yeah. Let's cross over to Abuja now, and here's Linda Akibe. Linda. Hello, Ijoma. Now we head straight to politics. Ahead of the People's Democratic Party's national convention this, in December, the party's Concerned Stakeholders Forum, led by Senator Ibrahim Mandu, is leading a delegation to pick a consensus chairmanship candidate from the Southwest. Senator Mandu is insisting that the group is concerned about uniting all the candidates who have indicated interest in the various positions with a view to picking consensus candidates for the convention. He also warns that the group will resist any attempt by the party's convention to impose a candidate or manipulate the process. Resolve to set up a committee to work out the possibilities of adopting a candidate for the office of chairman and other important offices where there are two more members in the race. The group agreed not to allow various ambitions of fellow members to contest for party offices in the forthcoming convention to divide the group. We will ensure that the convention conducts its election freely fairly and transparently. We will say we are going to shine our eyes, we will put our ears to the ground and resist any attempt to impose anybody on us. We will resist any attempt to manipulate the process. As we resisted before, we held our parallel convention in Abuja we are going to use the same spirit to ensure that the election is conducted freely, fairly, and transparently. The Anambra State governorship election is heating up, and the political parties are gearing up for the big day. In Onicha, the All Progressives Grand Alliance, ABGA, was welcomed by the people of Onicha North and Onicha South, who expressed support for the re-election bid of Governor Willie Obiano, by coming out in large numbers at the Godwin Achebe Stadium. Members of other political parties also defected to APCA. Members of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APCA, troop out in large numbers to receive Governor Willie Obiano at the Godwin Achebe Stadium in Onicha, South Local Government Area. <laughs> Transition Chairman of Onicha South Local Government Area announces the support of the entire local area for Mr. Obiano in his bid for re-election as Governor of Anambra State. We are saying Onicha South is for Apoga and we are for Willie Obiano second term. For the former central bank governor, Professor Charles Saludo, Mr. Willie Obiano is the only qualified candidate for the job, hence he should retain his position. There is no vacancy at the government house, no cap. 2022, there will be a new election when Governor Obiano will probably be handing over. And even then, he will still hand over to APGA government in Anambra State. The man of the moment on mounting the podium encourages the people to continue to support APGA for overall victory. I will keep awake so that you will sleep with your two eyes and Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
While the Hausa community and other important groups reaffirm their support for Mr. Obiano, over a hundred persons from the PDP, the APC and Labour Party defected to APGA. Away from politics, state governments have agreed with the federal government that 1% of the consolidated revenue account should be dedicated to the health sector. The Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki, told State House correspondents that this was among decisions reached at the monthly National Economic Council meeting presided over by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, at the State House. The state governments were also urged to pay their counterpart funding for the smooth takeoff of vaccination against communicable diseases, as only 12 states out of the 36 states of the Federation have paid theirs. Our correspondent Gloria Umezuki reports. The Vice President, Professor Yemio Shibajo, presides over the National Economic Council meeting at the State House Council Chamber. At a joint news conference, the governor of Edo State, Mr. Godswin Obaseki, announced a renewed commitment by states to strengthen the primary health care system. Adequate funding, according to the governor, will enable government effectively prevent and contain outbreak of diseases. There was a consensus in council that the provision of the 2014 Act that we should contribute 1% of the consolidated revenue funds for health care uh, was also raised. And it's the hope of council that this will commence from the next budget year. With that sort of funding available, we will not be solely reliant on international donor agencies or grants to fund our primary health care system. The governor of Abia State pointed out that the various efforts of the government should not be undermined by unfounded rumors. Council encouraged the immunization program by paying counterpart funding and uh, taking ownership of the programs in their respective states. If any person or government is involved in the injection of any noxious substance, it amounts to the, the highest form of, uh, of uh, terrorism. Meanwhile, the Kebi State Governor also announced that the federal government has released 1.6 billion naira to alleviate the sufferings of flood victims in the affected states across the country. The council puts the balance of the excess crude account at $2.3 billion as at September 2017. Gloria Umejuke, Channels Television News. When the news at 10 returns, Shell Petroleum Development Company lifts its force majeure on Nigeria's Bonnie Light crude export after one month shutdown. That's some business news. Join us again. <laughs>